Mariners lose 4-3. They fall to 45-36 and 36 on the season. And they lose the first of the three-game set with the Tampa Bay Rays. Go over the scoring place. Uh, Big Dumper gets us on the board first. He smokes a home run to right center. Makes it one nothing in the middle of the fourth. Tampa Bay answers in the fourth on a wild pitch by Taylor Sassetto. Of course, we'll talk about why Sassetto was pitching in that situation. Ties the game at 1-1 after four. Mariners get one in the seventh. A Mitch Garver homer to left to score Dominic Canzone. Three to one. But then in the eighth, Ben Rortvet hits a ground rule double to score Taylor Walls. And Yandy Diaz singles. To right to score DeLuca and Siri, 4-3. Mariners get nothing in the ninth. I'm sure there's a positive somewhere. Big Dumper had a combo meal. For those unfamiliar with a combo meal, that is a homer and a stolen base. Third of the year. Also drew two walks, so he had a nice day at the plate. Uh, Mitch Carver did have the big two-run homer. Uh, pitched down the middle of the flipping plate from Chris Davinsky, who stinks. It's crazy how bad Chris Davinsky stinks now. You know, he has a 25% ground ball, right? Now, he's never been a guy who, you know, exactly put the ball on the dirt a whole heck of a lot. But three quarters fly balls is a lot. And there's a reason why you have an ERA of six when you do that. Did I spill or do I have a... Oh, it's just my shirt. I'm wearing an, <laughs> I'm wearing an inside out shirt. Uh, uh, pitching wise, the bullpen for the first four innings of work was good. Sustato got in a little bit of trouble, no question about it, but Thornton able to escape it and then was really good in his clean inning. Michael Bauman looked fantastic again, eight for eight strikes. We love to see that because control is one of his biggest bugaboos. Stanick works around the walk. We'll talk about the other two guys. Uh, thank you so much to Simply Seattle for providing the very best in Seattle sports gear. Great stuff from the Mariners, Seahawks, Supersonics, Kraken, Storm, Sounders. You can find it all at Simply Seattle. And once you find it all, use code MOLLYWAP15, M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. We really appreciate their support. I'd appreciate you guys supporting them because it helps their business and also it shows you're paying attention to the show. Really appreciate it. Link in the description, simplyseattle.com. All right, so the biggest negative, other than the fact that they are just playing some goodness gracious awful baseball right now, for on this road trip anyway, the biggest negative is that Brian Wu leaves this game with an injury. I purposely waited to hear Scott Service's comments until uh, I recorded. He's going to go in for an MRI, left with a strained hamstring, if I didn't say that. So the good news there is it's not arm-related. Obviously, you know, you don't want any injury for anyone in wake of life or pitchers or whatever. But if you're going to have an injury to a pitcher, you do prefer it to be lower half. It's nice that this injury is not something related to the elbow trouble that has given him, well, trouble. So there's your good news in that situation. Uh, he wasn't particularly good when he was on the mound, though. I'll say that. He gave up five hits. He gave up the run. The run's not really his fault, but it is in a way because he gives up the runner. Uh, Taylor Sassetto and Seattle Mariner pitching staff, why are you so bad at holding runners? Because that run scores because of a wild pitch, which, you know, has nothing to do with uh, – holding runners, but the runner gets to third from another atrocious pickoff throw. The amount I have seen from the Seattle Mariners over the last month or so of just terrible, non-competitive throws to first base, just, just leave them alone. I, I know you got, I have complained ad nauseum about not being able to hold runners. No, they're only going to second base if you don't hold them. They're so bad at it. They are the worst major league team I have seen at holding runners. 
and I am an old man who's watched a lot of teams. Now, maybe not as closely as Seattle Mariners. They're certainly the worst Mariner team I've seen at it. Perry Hill, come fix your dudes. Because <laughs> this is ugly. So anyway, that run scores and it's charged to him. Whether or not that should be an earned run, I don't know. Probably not. Anyway, he didn't look great. He gave up a bunch of hits, five hits in those three innings of work. So three plus, I should say. But uh, not great. Not great seeing your pitchers leave with injury. That's the obvious point of obvious points. But we should know more tomorrow on the severity of the injury because he's undergoing that imaging right now. Uh, pitching wise, I'm, I'm going to kind of end with both and those guys. So, welcome back, Jorge Polanco. Boy, you sure suck today, though. Awful. Awful at bats. The first three in particular were horrific. And we've seen too much of that from Jorge Polanco. And there is some pressure on him because of how good Ryan Bliss has been. Uh, Ryan Bliss apparently going to work out in the outfield. That's going to be interesting to see, you know. Maybe he can be their Ben Zobris type, play all over the place and get some playing time. With how good he's been offensively, I think you need to find a way to get him in the lineup. I think you need to find a way to get him in the lineup for sure. But Polanco today, awful. I expect bigger things from him in the second half, but some of that has to do with how can you be much worse? How can you be much worse? Hi, Anthony. Be right back, guys. Anthony brought me dinner. Very good brother-in-law. Very good brother-in-law. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Jorge Polanco stunk. And he has stunk for most of the year. Bad game from Julio. Did just kind of get under a ball that he could have hit out, but the results are still not good enough, even with a walk. Oof. Bad game from Luke Rayleigh. Really bad game from Luke Rayley. Not a great game from Josh Rojas. I will say in the pot of spot pa in the positive side of things. Uh, they did draw seven walks. Crawford drew a couple. I should should have mentioned him in the positive. He got on three times today. Nice to see because hasn't looked great so far. So we're not complaining about a three reach game. Uh, big dumper. We mentioned the two. Julio drew a good walk. Uh, Canzone did draw one walk. Three other pretty bad at bats. Rojas did not have a good day, but did draw a walk. The offense wasn't very good today. The offense wasn't very good today. I, I should have mentioned the Garver Homer in the positive section, too. I don't think I did. I don't care. I don't care. This game had me cranky. You can tell. I just spent 45 seconds not talking and responding to a text message from my sister. I'm sorry. It, it's just really frustrating. And I haven't even gotten to the most frustrating thing. So, look, you have to use Voth in this situation or Voth or Veth or. And he's been fine. Wasn't fine today. If he can't be a guy that you use in high leverage as often as they do. Now, look, they're going to get Gabe Spire back around the All Star break. That'll help, but he wasn't pitching all that well before the injury. They're hopefully going to get Gregory Santos back soon. You still got to go get another high leverage guy. He was bad today, Voth was. Very, very, very bad. Gave up the two hits, gave up the walk. Didn't fool hitters whatsoever. And once again, you have to bring in Andre Munoz. Andres Munoz for a four-out save, something they've had to do far too often, far too often. And credit to Jose Caballero, former Mariner legend, for a really good at-bat. And then Munoz gets the ground ball by Yandy Diaz, and it gets by Ty France. I'm not saying it was the easiest play in the world. Far from it. 
at the very least, your competent starting first baseman has to knock that ball down. If you knock it down, you got a chance to make the play at first, or you don't let two runs score. And we got to talk about Ty France because I always feel bad about it. You know why I feel bad about it? I'm just going to be honest with you. I feel bad about it because I, any time, say anything bad about Ty France, I get on. On. I don't like being on. I do my best to be a, a, a strong person and let the comments go off. You know, my dream job is hosting a radio show. I better learn how to handle criticism. You know what I mean? But it becomes anytime you insult Ty France, especially on that stupid website, you are in for a world of hurt because there's a lot of people who really love him. And I don't hate that for you. I love it for you. Find your favorite players, root for them. Having said that, leave me alone. But this is Ty France so far in the month of June, and that's before today, okay? He's hitting 111 with a 194 slugging percentage. Now, he's also getting on at a 360 clip, and that's not terrible. But getting on at a 360 clip when you can do nothing but move station to station isn't good enough. And his defense has become a problem. And I got to be honest, too. I'm going to get in trouble for this one. I am begging, begging the network that shows the Mariners to show a smidgen of objectivity. Just a smidgen. One tiny iota. Because listening to Angie Mentic, who I have nothing but nice things to say about as a person. Don't know her at all, but know many people who just love her, and justifiably so. Listening to her talk about how Ty France is this defensive stalwart shows me that you either are not paying attention or you just don't care about objectivity. a horrible play it's a play your starting first baseman should make and unfortunately it's the reason you lose and it didn't help that he went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts today it's not good enough and speaking of not good enough so we're at the halfway point of the season and the Mariners are on pace to go exactly 90 and 72. And a 91 season would be great. Is it good enough? I don't know. So much of what I believe the Mariners season becomes will have to do with how they do in the postseason. Obviously, got to get there. If you win 90 games, you're going to get there, right? But we're at the halfway point, And I see half a roster. I see half a roster. And, you know, you can say that I'm just being a prisoner of the moment. And a little bit. Daily show, you have to be a prisoner of the moment a little bit, right? But you watch how they've played on this road trip and you see the flaws. You have to see the flaws. You know, if they win the next two and they end up with a four and five road trip, that's not the worst thing in the world. Not at all. You can overcome four and five. You can overcome three and six. Two and sevens become tough. You got to play really well at home, and they have a tough homestand coming up after this. But you just watch them play right now, and you see how flawed they are. They are flawed in their rotation. I don't regret immediately saying that. They could be flawed in their rotation because Bryce Miller and Brian Wu 
you got health concerns with one, and Bryce Miller has been absolutely objectively terrible on the road as of late. You got issues in the bullpen, you have defensive issues, and you obviously have offensive issues. So, the good news there is, is you have those issues. You still have a five-game lead in the division. I don't know what the score of the other games are. Okay, Google, what's the score of the Astros game? Okay, they didn't play. Okay, Google, what's the score of the Rangers game? Thank you, Brew Crew. Thank you, Brew Crew. So you're probably going to have a five and a half game lead. That's great. It's awesome that your scuffles, and they are scuffles, still have you with more than a handful of game lead. But it's clearly not good enough. It's clearly not good enough. Please hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll have a members-only chat tomorrow at 7 o'clock. That'll be fun. Uh, hit join, $4.99 a month for that. My MLB draft videos, my prospect videos, trade deadline videos, all of that stuff is going to be there. These will always remain free. Game recaps and a bunch of other stuff will always remain free. But I will have that paid content for those of you who are interested. Really appreciate the support. I love you, Ty France. Got to be better.